I'm Hobby, the writer. You have a pass? <laughs> you must be new here. I don't need a pass. I've been working here off and on 20 years. Look it up, Hobby. H O B B Y. Everybody needs a pass. Two more comments. Who you got business with? Uh, Dr. Costello, the director. We work together on Hell Driver. He'll set you straight. Mr. Costello's office, please. Somebody here to see him named Hot. Yeah, I thought everybody needed a pass. Oops, got to go, Mr. C. It's the boss. Good morning, Mr. Foreman. Oh, the missus and I saw a letter go Garrity last night. Wonderful picture. The wife cried three times. Real tears. I think you got to hit that, Mr. Beef. Right, What about Costello? Says he can't remember you. What? Says to tell you, if he does remember, and he can get his hands on you, he will like to give you a complimentary neck massage. What are you talking about? Says he'd like to wring your neck for that so-called patch job you ducked out on. He says, you know what I was referring to. Take you with a hat. Hold it. the best left-handed writer in Hollywood. <laughs> we are pleased to announce that in the future, Mr. Hobby's work will appear exclusively on United States postage stamps. <laughs> How you doing, Smitty? How am I doing? Listen, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I just got an extra two days, and the picture is about a week and a half over as it is. Well, well how, how's by you? I mean, how's the, how's the battle? Well, I don't know. <laughs> in between pictures. <laughs> well, listen, I got to run. I'm doing Karachi in five minutes. So I'll see you around, huh? See you later. What do you think? Stay. I wrote stars over Sarajevo, the hit stage play. Oh, really? Well, congratulations. My agent sold in London, said it was wonderful. And I understand they'll bring it to New York in the fall. Yes, and after that, I suppose they'll be mailing it over to Africa so the hot and tots can have a go to. Call it Moon over Mombasa, I should imagine. Ready with the banquet set, Mr. Wilson. Right there. Care to watch? <laughs> been insulted. Insulted? You goddamn right I'm insulted. Guys like me are the backbone of the industry. I mean, ask around. 20 years in the business, scripts, publicity. 
a list of credits as long as your army. You think the lease of Phoebe's could do is issue me a lousy pass? I mean, what does it cost of them? A penny, a half a cent? I'll tell you something. I like to add up what I made for them in the last 20 years. Yeah, it isn't like it used to be, that's for sure. I'm talking about respect. I'll tell you something else. It all goes in cycles. You know? Up today, down tomorrow. Wait till it's their turn. Check out your foreign religions, they knew. Cycle. No merry-go-round. Even the Swamis knew up one day, the other next. You want to lay something off in the double? Hey, do me a favor, huh? What's that? Hey. How long have you and I been friends? Uh-oh. Just answer the question. I don't have any friends. I told you, they're too expensive. I'd rather put the energy into my coin collection. Coins build equity. All right, then. How many bets have I made off with you? The answer is no. N-O. No what? No, I'm not going to lend you any money. Why not? That reminds me. Did you hear the one about the French horn player whose toupee fell into his instrument? He spent the rest of the evening blowing his top. <laughs> Tootie told it to me. He's working over on stage eight. It's a joke. It sticks. Besides, what's that got to do with... Plenty, maybe. Who knows? Tootie says the Ritz brothers are paying five dollars apiece for new gags. Five dollars? I'd need over a dozen jokes. That's impossible. For you, maybe. Anyway, you said it, I didn't. I'm merely a reporter. Like the lawyer says, where there's a will, wait, there's wait, a... Wait a minute. Stop the press. I just remembered. That hand that lives in the valley, Gip, uh, what's his name, never paid me that 20 he borrowed at Santa Anita. Three months ago. That ain't much, but it's a start. Aren't you going to call him first? I lose the element of surprise. Are you kidding? I'll ambush the hyena. My car will run anyway. Hey, fella. Why don't we get the hogs up the stars? I'm in pictures. I'm here myself, okay? Actor? No! Okay, let's see what the dog would say. Uh, you won't. Uh, I say, um, what, what stars homes can we visit? I mean, can we go to um, Robert Taylor's and Clark Gables and Shirley Temple's home? I guess you can't even get in. Why? Because if we could go to the very best homes, you see the most exclusive, we would be prepared to pay more than your regular price. Can we do it? You want to visit the homes of the stars? Can we? Sure. Well, why not? <coughs> All right. Are you prepared to pay in advance? Well, um, suppose we paid you five dollars now, and another five if we could visit Clark Gable's home, or somebody like that. And say another for uh, Loretta Young, and, and so on. Would that be all right? Of course, at this time of day, you can't really be sure anybody is at home. They might be at the studio working or any number of things. We understand. We know a woman who had her picture taken with George Brent, Mrs. Horace J. Ives, Jr. She's our neighbor. Uh, she lives at 372 uh, Rose Drive in the Kansas City. We, we, we live at 327. Uh, we always wonder how much that picture cost her. Of course, we wouldn't go as far as she did. I don't know what they'd say back home. No. Uh, no paid pictures. Uh, where are we going first? Oh, well, I had a couple of calls to pay anyway, uh, so I thought I'd go by Errol Flynn's uh, talk to him. Errol Flynn? He's just one of my favorites. Do you know him? Oh, sure I do. Actually, this isn't my business at all. I'm a writer. I'm uh, doing research, filling in for a friend. 
Rock rider, really? <laughs> what, what kind of riding? Oh, uh, the flickering of screen. Motion picture. Movies? Well, uh, I, I mean, do you do westerns? I do anything. <clears throat> My business it doesn't pay to specialize. Well, what have you done recently? Anything we might have seen? Well, uh, well, uh, it's Captain is Courageous, uh, Grand Hotel, uh, The Awful Truth, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, uh, uh, Those are all my favorite movies. <laughs> Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. <laughs> um, well, why aren't you writing a picture now? Well, on strike. We've got a thing called a Spring Playwrights uh, Guild, uh, and we're on strike. What are you striking for? Yeah, pull over. Here we are. Uh, to be on the safe side, I better go in first. We don't want to intrude on any family scenes, you know. Uh -huh. Does he have family scenes? Well, you know how people are. Yeah. I'll go check. Uh, Clark Gables. Um, I want to tell Carol Lombard about her hair. It's way too frizzy. Besides, I want to see their bedroom. <sighs> Clark Gables, are you sure? Well, they're out in the valley. It's not the best time of the day to go out there. Probably 110 in the shade, at least. Even the lizards hightail it. Well, then if we can't go to Gables, I'd like to visit Miss Temple. Bill Bougie would love it. <sighs> well, now, I don't know. Um, they're kind of afraid of kidnappers, I hear. Look, instead of... Really? Do, do we look like kidnappers? I said I would like to visit Miss Temple. Didn't I? Paying you good money. Hey, okay, fine by me. First, I better make the call about it, though. Oh, 
Grant. Uh -huh. Oh, Mr. Temple. Mi sono fatto very decorated. Could I meet Mrs. Temple, do you think? How can you? She's out. I told you, nobody's home. Nobody? Nobody. Oh. Then let's look at her bedroom. Come on, honey. <laughs> Mr. Temple. Texas. Uh, Jack Burners wants to see you. He wants to see you now. Uh-huh. 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 Absolutely not. Ten thousand dollars to play an Indian is outrageous. Give him five thousand. Tell him to play a half breed. I am not kidding. It's a motion picture, not a giveaway program. I didn't know. Uh, didn't do what? It just looked like me, but you'll never prove a thing. What are you talking about? The size will never hold up in court if it even gets that far. I've got a pretty sharp lawyer, and if it does get that far, there's something I think about if I were you. It'll be your mug, not just mine, splashed across those tabloids. Think about it. Where are you going? Talk to my lawyer, huh? I know what I'm not wanted. Hold it! I called you up here to hire you for a job. What's this all about? Job? Have you lost your mind? You mean it is a job? Look, I don't know what's going on here. I don't even care if you know. I haven't got the time. But something came up you may be able to help out on. At least I thought so an hour ago. I took a hell of a chance even considering you. And now this. You act like you've just gotten released from a rubber room. You call me up here for a job? I just said that, didn't I? What kind of job? Hiring you is the kind of thing that gets executives fired. Now, hold on there. That's out of line, and you know it. I've been in this business 20 years, Jack. You and I, we go back. Besides, I've got more credits than a dog's got fleas. Oh, precisely the words I would have chosen. Dog and fleas. Very funny. What about that swashbuckler we did? Oh, don't remind me. Uh, you liked it plenty enough then, right? How could I buckle when it should have swashed? Nevertheless, if you recall, one critic even said, All right, all right, look, maybe I haven't been too tactful. What I mean by all this is that most of those credits were a long time ago. All right, maybe I'm making a mistake, but we'll pay you what Republic paid you last time out. Three fifty a week, only no advance. No advance? Not a cent. Why not? I don't want you going off on any bat. That's insulting. Too bad. What about no advance? What's the job? Did you ever hear of a writer named Renee Wilcox? Hell yes, she's pretty good. It's a he, not a she. An English playwright. 
He's here in L.A. for his health. We've been kicking around a Russian ballet picture for about a year and a half now. Three bad scripts on it. Last week, we signed up Wilcox. He's in just the person. You mean he's a little... I don't know. I don't care. We think we can borrow Zorina, so we want to hurry things up. Do a shooting script instead of going to treatment. Wilcox is inexperienced, and that's where you come in. He used to be a good man for structure. Used to be? Oh, all right. Maybe you still are. I don't know. Anyway, find yourself an office and get together with Wilcox. Oh, wait a minute. Get yourself a new hat, huh? You used to be quite the boy around the secretaries in the old days. Don't give up. Hello, Renee. I'm your partner. Pat Harvey. I hear we're gonna lick some stuff into shape. Ever collaborate before? I've never even written for the cinema before, much less collaborate. That's ah, okay. What difference does it make? I'll teach you everything you need to know. I'll tell you one thing, though. It's a lot different from playwriting, that's for sure. Yes. I read a book about it. <laughs> oh, boy. Is that amusing? Sure it is. I wrote one of those sucker traps myself, 1929. The Secrets of Film Writing. Would have sold too if sound hadn't come in. Too bad. Uh, too bad is right. <clears throat> they took these couches out of here in uh, 32. Big money bought them back in 34. There's two things a rider needs for sure. There's a car and a decent divan. I say, what's a boom shot? A boom shot? <laughs> That's when the camera's on a crane. Why? You'll get the hang of it. Don't worry. Yes, it all seems simple enough. Sure it is. You'll do fine. Well, I must be going. So it's a pleasure to have met you, Mike. It's Pat. <laughs> Pat Harvey. <laughs> Not so fast. What about the script? What have you done on it so far? No, I haven't done anything. That idiot Berners gave me some rubbish and told me to go on from there. And that's far too dismal. Dismal, huh? Where's the patient? No. I like it better if we get the war in here somewhere. Have a dance of gold as a Red Cross nurse, and then she could get regenerated, maybe. Know what I mean? If you ask me, regeneration's the key. That's a fine hello. Huh. Mr. Hoppy, I was looking for Mr. Wilcox. Catherine Hodge, I was your secretary when I worked here three years ago. Of course, sure, sure, I remember now. Catherine Hodge. Well, grab a chair, why don't you? So, they assign you to Wilcox, huh? Well, I thought so anyway, but he hasn't given me any work yet. Oh, I'm not surprised if you ask me. The guy's completely nuts. <laughs> ask me what a boom shot was. Can you imagine? Maybe he is sick. Bernie says that's why he's out here. With my luck, he'll probably start throwing up all over the office. Oh, he's well now. Nothing to worry about there. Well, he sure as hell doesn't look well to me. Anyway, if you want, why don't you stick around? No reason why you can't work for me this afternoon instead, is there? I don't see why not, no. Good. Now, let's get down to work. Angle on Martin. Martin, what shall I tell Dubček? Franz, tell him anything you please. The audition in the balance, she rips the shoes from her feet, throws them violently against the surprise impresario's chest, storming out. Feeling for the first time what the defection will mean to the...
thinking about this notion of war being a regenerating force for ballet dance. If you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about the war. Two brothers and the guards. Well, I guess you're lucky to be here in Hollywood, then, huh? That's as it may be. You know, I could tip you off to a shop on uh, Vine that's got some really swell looking and serious stuff here. Oh, no, no, thank you. I have my own tailor. Uh-huh. Wouldn't mind tagging along with you sometime, however. What for? Oh, social observation, I suppose you'd call it. The descent into the depths, that sort of thing. I'd like to visit your haunts. Haunts? You make it sound like cows. Say, so, you know, we've got culture on this side of the ocean too, you know. I'm convinced of it. Los Angeles is the melting pot. Polo to polo in two generations. Handy with the ladies, eh? Hey. If I had two bits for every secretary and dress extra dolly that ever fell for the old tweed jacket and ours bit, I'd be wealthier than Zanuck. Like the bumblebee in the flower garden. The writer's mission in this burg, anyway, is to pollinate. One of a few fringe benefits. What about our secretary? It's hot. Only a matter of time. He's got a thing for me, I can tell. Likes writers. I suppose anyone that can scribble something longer than a laundry list around here is considered George Bernard Shaw. I wouldn't know. What? Lead on, Mike. Don't tell me. He hasn't called in yet, right? I think maybe he's had personal matters to attend to. How do you know? I'll give him something to attend to next time I see him. The nerve of that guy. He can call me anything he likes, but somebody's got to write the damn picture. The guy's been in his office for four days. Uh, I don't know what to do. I could go to Burns and squawk, but we probably both end up out of our ears. Why don't you write it yourself? You know, problem with you, you're suffering from clean underwear. There you go, both. Okay. Maybe I will write it. Why can't I move my legs? He's 
Blacking out, what do I do? Boil some water, lots of it. Boil some water. Boil some water, lots of it. Boil some water. Boil some water, lots of it. You. Hello, old man. Heard you outside. Thought I'd taken the performance. <laughs> Don't give me any of that old man stuff. And none of your stiff upper lip garbage either. Any idea what the word collaborate means? Where the hell have you been? If you must know, I've been, uh, uh, having a rip and a good time, I suppose. Or maybe I should change that stiff upper lip into a fat upper lip. We've got a script to crack out, buddy. Oops, I have to go. I've, uh, they've scheduled these meetings back to back. It really is most inconvenient. So, uh, ta-da. Enjoyed the reading. Mm. Is there something I could do to help? Actually, uh, maybe there is. I'm working on a script and I need some medical advice. Stop. <laughs> what kind of advice? Well, uh, are you breaking for lunch? Mm. <laughs> stay on the job, huh? You know, I don't think I've ever really talked to an artist before. It's so stimulating. Actually, the uh, big shots are at the next table over there. Directors, producers, everyone but the highest execs. They wanted they could have Ronald Colvin pressing pants. Well, I usually sit over there, of course, but they don't want the ladies. At lunch, anyway, they don't want the ladies. Did you ever think of uh, getting a test? A test? Well, sure. A screen test. <laughs> oh, come on, why not? Heck, you're a lot easier on the eyes than a lot of those tired Nellies I've seen gracing the screen lately. Well, thank you, but I don't know that I could. I mean... Sure you could. <clears throat> Everyone can. That's the way stars are born, aren't they? If you like, I'll see what I can do to set it up. Well, now, do you think that things like that can really happen? I mean, you read about it all the time in magazines. Then leave it to me. But you wanted to ask me some medical questions. Oh, yes. I almost forgot. Uh, <clears throat> we've got a doctor in the script, you see, who tells some people to boil some water. He says, boil some water, lots of it. And we were wondering, of course, what the people would do next. Probably they would boil it, I guess. What people? Well, uh, there's a, uh, somebody from the ballet company and a man who lived next door, and a soldier, and uh, the man that was hurt, of course, and uh, some other guy I'll probably wind up cutting out. Uh-huh. Well, uh, when a doctor gives orders, there are orders. Oh, yeah, I suppose so, huh? Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> you should pardon the expression, eh? Are you mad? No. This table, yeah, please? Man. There is no more question in this paper. Sorry, that chair is taken. Doesn't work like it to me. Anyway, I got to sit somewhere, right? And it's a free country, huh? Are you fatuous bunch of stuffed shirts? that? I can't expect to exploit the working the man. man. <sighs> they deny him. Why what they're going to do to him? Deliberate. Excuse me, but this table is reserved. They told me to sit anywhere. I don't care what they told you. They were wrong, okay? Extras don't eat here, you see this? Listen, very... I've been standing around for six hours while they shoot this miserable piece of caca, and I'm tired, okay? 
I don't know who cooked it up, but this is the... Why don't they do something? He's a fright. They want to drag him out by his liver. They have two yellow. Why don't they call the studio police? They have seen plenty. Who is it? It's a big guy. Okay? It would poison up. And get out of here, buddy. And get out quick. Who's telling me, huh? Who's telling you? Where's Cushman? Where's the personnel man with me? Sorry, I love me. I'll... Get off your ears! I know my rights! I'll take you on one by one! All of you! Slice you to the sleep and feed you to the pigs! That's me! Oh, it was a gag. That's Walter Herrick, the writer. It's his picture. Power of the Tsar is Herrick's picture. Uh, he was kidding, Max Lean. It was just a gag. sent a messenger over to your apartment. You weren't there. Don't you have a script to finish? It's been a week. What'd you do? Go on a tear? Burger sent a messenger. Put a fork in me, Lou. I'm done. You haven't finished yet? Finished. I'm still on page six. <sighs> you are cooked. What are you doing here? Hey, just in time for the execution. Jack Burns wants a script by four o'clock. It's quite all right. I've finished it. What? I've concluded it. <laughs> You've been working. Oh, I mean, well, what have you done? A treatment? Shooting script, actually. First, I was held back by personal worries, but I found once I got started, it was really quite simple. You just get behind the camera and dream. We were supposed to collaborate. Burners will be wild. I've always worked alone, old man. Anyway, I'll explain it to Burners this afternoon. I'm off to get this mimeo. Hodge, please. Hi, Hobby. Listen, I've got a favor to ask. Renee Wilcox came in here and he's got a script I want to take a look at. Skip over to Duplicate and pick it up, will you? I just want to read it as all. It hasn't been bound to copy yet. Can I help? Give me a used stamp and some paste. Dear Mr. Wilcox, I am sorry to report your two brothers were killed in action today by a long-range Tommy gun. You are wanted at home in England immediately. John Smy, the British consulate, New York. How is it? I can't believe it. Well, it's all here. He's even got it in the right form. Fades, mm -hmm. dissolves, trucking shots, everything. How do you do it? <sighs> the 
There's a waiting area in the duplicating room. If Wilcox is there, slip this under the door. If he's out, get a call boy to deliver it wherever he is. Say it's from the mail room. Then get off the lot for the afternoon. So you won't catch on, see? What's wrong? Is all this, I mean, is this legal? Well, it is if you want a Christmas bonus this year. It's an emergency. Look at it this way. I won't steal what Burr has hired me to do, right? Well, that's got to count for something anyway. Heck, this is my fault I didn't wind up contributing to structure. I was working on dialogue. Besides, how's anyone to know it wasn't my structure in the first place? Good point. She won't talk, that's for sure. Don't think she was involved. Anyway, Will Cox did it to himself. Heck, I was willing to play the game. He was the one who wouldn't collaborate. He should have done, see? He should have fed it to me as he wrote. Then we might have had some. What about laying off a bet? Not today. I got too many things going on. I've been paying you on this. A thousand a week. Not bad. Hey, a lot of us old timers are coming back. Wait and see. Martinez. Glass of gym with a potato in it. <laughs> Mr. Burns will see you now. consider seeing a psychoanalyst? A shrink? No, never have. But I guess I could bone up on it if I had to. Why? Uh, what is it, a new assignment or something? No, not exactly. It's just that I think you've lost your grip. Even larceny requires a certain cunning. I just talked to Wilcox on the phone. Now, wait a minute. Hold on, Jack. I don't know what you're thinking, I don't know what he's trying to claim, but if you ask me, Wilcox is nuts. You even said he was sick, remember? If he claims that I stole from him, then he is crazy. Certifiably, I didn't steal a thing. Besides, his name is on it, isn't it? <laughs> Two weeks ago, I laid out an entire structure for him. Every stinking scene. And this is the thanks I get. I even wrote an entire scene, the one at the end, about the war. That's right, the war. But look, if you like Wilcox's ending better, then far be it for me to... Yes, I do like his ending better. It's wonderful. In fact, I've never seen a man take to this work so quickly. Oh, packed. Oh, you've told the truth exactly once since you came into this room. And that is that you didn't steal anything from him. I sure as hell didn't. In fact, I gave him stuff. Are you sure about that? Positive? They sent this over from Ninio. I had a chance to look at it. What is it? Remember I told you we had three scripts done on ballet shoes? This one, the one you bludgeoned, is an old one we discarded a year ago. This one is completely different. Wilcox. 
box rotted. You see, Rene was there and duplicating when your secretary arrived. So he sent one of the old scripts back to you and one of the new ones, the script he wrote to me. Pretty clever, huh? It seems he and that girl are soft on each other. Miss Hodges, whatever her name is, uh, typed a play for him this summer. They like each other. I thought he was... Hold it, Pat. That's enough. You've gotten yourself into enough trouble as it is today. Let's not add slander. But he's responsible. He's the one who wouldn't collaborate. And he all this time, he's... He was writing a swell script, this script. And he could write his own ticket if we can persuade him to stay here and do another. Anyway, thanks, Captain. Call my agent if anything turns up. Get me Mr. Marcus, will you? Is that you, R.W.? How are you, Jack? Get a chance to read it? I'll say. It's swell. Even better than you said. It's yeah, exactly what I need. Wilcox is with me now. Have you signed him up? I'm going to. Talent like his doesn't grow on trees. Only one thing. He seems he wants to work with Hobby. What? You're kidding. Hey! That's right. Here, he wants to talk to you. Wilcox here. Listen, Jack. I simply must have Pat Hobby. I'm extremely grateful to him. I had a quarrel with a certain young lady just before he came, but today Hobby brought us together. Besides, I want to write a play about him, so give him to me, will you? You fellows don't want him anymore, do you? Ta ta. Get me Pat Hobby, will you, Estelle? He's probably in the bar across the street. We're putting him on salary again, but I know we'll regret it. Oh, and take his hat, will you, too? He forgot it. is the year in next week's Tales from the Hollywood Hills when Lynn Redgrave and Rosemary Harris star in P.G. Woodhouse's The Old Reliable. Next tonight, fast forward your comedy intake and don't take anything too seriously here on Carlton Select.